Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ian Thorpe. I'm the chief executive of the Africa Trust, also the founder and former chief executive of Pump Aid. And I'd like to ask you, if somebody came up to you and said, what is the biggest environmental problem facing mankind today? What would initially come to your mind? Would it be global warming? Would it be deforestation? Those are probably some of the top ones, but the elephants in the room are actually much more significant in some ways. Access to clean water is a problem faced by 800 million, nearly a billion people in the world today. Access to decent sanitation is a problem faced by two and a half billion people. And equally, food security across Africa and developing countries is a huge problem. So these are the elephants in the room. These are the areas that are not spoken about enough. And I'd like to talk with you today about some innovations I've been involved with which help to address these areas. In 2005, with the elephant pump, uh, we were looking at clean water supply in rural Africa, starting in Zimbabwe. Uh, the elephant toilet, which won the prize in 2008, helps to address appropriate sustainable sanitation. And we combined these together to have impact on water, sanitation, and we also started to develop some new ideas. So here is the elephant pump. Uh, you can see uh, one of the ways to power the pump is with a bicycle system. This has been particularly popular in rural African schools. You can imagine children who don't get chance to buy a bicycle or have a toy like that come and queue up to play on the pump. And this has even been a problem with water being wasted. So we've had to develop tanks. Here's a little video clip showing you how the elephant pump works. The elephant pump is a simple hand pump that uses readily available materials such as homemade rope and washers to lift water from depths of up to 50 meters. At the bottom of the well, the washers enter into the pipe and lift a column of water to the surface. To ensure that the water cannot be contaminated, the whole mechanism is surrounded by a concrete housing. Because all the materials are locally available, the elephant pump is cheap to build and can be maintained by the local community. The pump is very easy to repair because Pump Aid is trained to teach us. Elephant pump is very simple to repair it and anyone can do it. So when you're looking to build an elephant pump, first of all you have to get access to the water. And very often the water table is quite deep. We can lift water from a depth of 50 meters, but with hand dug wells you run out of oxygen at that depth when you're digging. So we tend to go up to 30 meters in depth, and then it's lined with bricks and backfilled with sand to be a self-filtering, self-contained system. And so a lot of the work involved is by the people themselves, which gives a real sense of ownership. I'm pleased to say this project has really taken off. Since winning the prize in 2005, we've now reached over 2 million people. And that's talking about today, now as we sit here, two million people have used the elephant pump uh, to draw their clean water. And we're hoping to reach 10 million by 2020. And the key has been that people can make their own spare parts and it's easy for them to maintain. That's been the real key. We've also had some important business partners. The most important, Aquade, which is a company that produces water coolers in the UK, has been our partner from the very early days. And you can see their contributions have grown as their business has grown. And they link their business with the elephant pump. They tell the customers that if you use Aquade water coolers, you help provide water in Africa. And we've had more than four million pounds in funding for, through that partnership. Thirsty Planet is a brand of water which I launched in 2007, sold in UK supermarkets. A more ecological brand of water because it uses recycled plastic. 
and each bottle provides, that you buy provides money for clean water for a person in Africa for a year. And there's a fixed donation, 10 pence on a litre bottle, 5%, uh, 5 pence on a small bottle. We've produced over one and a half million pounds in funding from that partnership. But as we all know, water alone is not a solution. And what I mean by that is that although you can establish clean water supplies in villages, in schools, you will not have the same impact on health unless you also address the related area of sanitation. And this shows a typical situation in the bush, uh, near a school, near a homestead in Africa. That's just a path going off into the bush. And you can see at the end of that path, there's a little bit of white cloth. What you'll find there is open defecation and that cloth being used as reusable toilet paper. So that's the situation that exists across very large areas of Africa. Parts of Malawi, it's very common. And so we're looking at how do we address that. We developed the elephant toilet. The elephant toilet is a very cheap toilet to build with a number of innovations. You can see standing on the ears of the elephant there, there's a trunk which takes away most of the urine and diverts that into a secondary pit. And that's very important for the chemistry of what goes on in the toilet. Because if the urine goes into the main pit where the feces are, it kills the bacteria involved in decomposition, the pit fills up quickly. The toilet only costs $40 to build, which is a fraction of the cost uh, that most toilets that aid agencies are building in Africa at the moment. The diverted urine contains 90% of the useful nutrients in human waste. Most people assume it's in the solid waste, but the potassium, phosphorus, and nitrogen is mainly in the urine, and that provides a rich source of safe manure. And we also developed the bricks further. They're waterproofed bricks. Now, I went into one elephant toilet in Zimbabwe and found a child using this $1 million note as toilet paper. And that may seem extraordinary until I mentioned to you that this note was also in currency in circulation at the same time, which is $100 trillion. And you need 100 tons of the $1 million notes to buy one of these. And one of these buys you a bottle of Coke. So that's why that was happening. I had a, a bright idea following on from Thirsty Planet to come up with a brand of toilet tissue called elephant toilet tissue to provide funding for sanitation. But I'm yet to find a business partner. So if anyone knows somebody at Andrex who can link me up, I think this is another good idea of how to raise money for the sanitation. It's never as sexy, it's never as attractive. Money for clean water is always easier to find. But as I was mentioning, the water itself can be used productively for agricultural use. The toilets can produce manure, and that really impacts on the household economy, because a lot of economies are buying fertilizer. You can have fruit trees, you can have livestock and fish, medicinal herbs. You can have dry spell irrigation to keep the maize going through periods when the rains fail. So over the next seven years, we're hoping to reach 10 million people across Africa. We're already working in eight countries. We're using a school cluster, child-centered approach. So we introduce in the school and then we radiate out into the surrounding villages. We're looking to help five million people to have improved sanitation over this period. And we're doing this by seeding the program and training partners. But there's always another bright idea coming up and just coming back from Liberia over the recent months, we've developed a new kind of water filter. So this is where you mix clay with sawdust and then fire it anaerobically. So it turns, the sawdust turns into charcoal. And we've been using these filters together with these pipes made out of waste bottles to take water off the tin roofs, filter it for household consumption. So I'm really here today to thank everybody involved in the St. Andrews Prize. Conoco Phillips for your support. But I just want to 
pick out some of the trustees who perhaps don't even know the impact they've had on some of the finalists here. Sir Alec, Professor Lord Alec Brewers was my vice chancellor in 2000 and he uh, approved some funding for me to go to Africa to build the first elephant pumps. And he probably doesn't remember that, but long, long ago he had that impact. And many of the trustees here, the conversations we have impact on us very greatly, as do the conversations with other winners, such as David telling me about new innovations in his product, in his project. So I just want to thank you very much for your support, for your wisdom, for your guidance, and long may it continue. Thank you very much.